pointers and references in Rust. If you have a chance, avoid. If you don't have to use it, you might someday need it. Though if you have to, it's understandable to be uh, familiar with these concepts. The trick is avoid them if you can, because they just add a little bit of indirection to the code that then you have to sort of pay attention to. Someone in the future will have to read that code and then understand what's happening. Now, they are not too advanced in terms of the concept of being able to reference data and dereference data, though there is an indirection there. And if you can avoid it, then you've made a better choice. Simplicity is what I like. And in the Rust by example, they do describe here that uh, they want to make a distinction between destructuring and dereferencing, and they are different concepts. And I would even say that it goes so far that they are so different, that you wouldn't even need to mention that statement. They are just completely different things, right? You have data, and then you can uh, create a reference to that data, which is a pointer to the real data. But there are two variables. So you have two variables that have the same data, essentially. But when you've referenced data, you need to dereference it in order to modify the original data because it's a, a point of indirection. So C is, <laughs> you, you don't need to do it that way. There's other approaches. Uh, the, there are good reasons that you might want to do these kinds of things from a performance perspective, but very often you want to avoid them altogether be, unless you really, really need to bother with that kind of performance. So let's take an example. We've got uh, our, our main function scope here, and we've got some data that we're defining on the stack, and we're also going to define it as a reference. In order to set this in a match statement and to capture that data, you have to put an ampersand in front of it. In this case, we are essentially, they call it destructuring, but we are accessing the data within the reference. And this is gonna be a read, right? We're reading the data. Because the data is defined like this, we have to match it like this. And if you want to improve the readability of that just a little bit by, you're just gonna change the, the syntax a bit. Instead of having ampersand here, you can put a star symbol to dereference it, right? It removes the reference and is instead pointing directly at the data value inside the reference. So it's gonna point directly at four in this case. So you have that here and then you can just use val and it's like a regular variable at that point. So that's kind of neat. If you want to do it like this, that is, uh, that's how that works. And you can do it like that. I've never used this keyword in Rust before, the ref keyword. Ref keyword is another way to sort of mention that a data that you're going to be assigning a variable to is going to be a reference. And it is just a slightly a different syntax than using an ampersand, which are basically identical. They're the same thing. You can do something like this, like say let ref equals ref c1 equals c. And c in this case is a character, the character q. Not to remember, we could make it less confusing. We can say it's c, there we go. You can also define it this way and they are the same. Let ref c2 equals ampersand c. These two are the same. They're exactly the same. The only difference is that you can use it on, the ref is supposed to be on the left side of the equal sign. An ampersand will be on the right side. A ref borrow on the left side of assignment is equivalent to an ampersand borrow on the right side. These two are identical. I mean, the second one has, you know, less keystrokes. I kind of like that. And it is, it's clear that you're borrowing with reference with an ampersand. And you'll see an ampersand around here and there quite often in Rust. So it makes sense that you would get used to that kind of syntax. Though I do like just the general cleanness that you see here of not having uh, any symbols. It's all just, you know, characters, like uh, standard alph alphanumeric characters. This is kind of nice. I like that too. Oh, and you can use the ref keyword like this as well. You can put it right there. Look at this. So we've got R, which is a, uh, it's going to be our local scoped variable name. We're matching on value. Value is five. So it's just the number five. And then we are going to assign a reference. Interesting, interesting. Got a reference to value. So I want to see what that prints out. Got a reference to a value five. Do you need ref there? I don't think you need ref there. I mean, in the example that they're providing, yeah, you don't need the reference there, but you could if you really want it. What happens if you do ampersand? Because they're supposed to be the same-ish? Oh, it doesn't like that because it knows it's not a reference, so it can't match on it. Interesting. So you can do this and it will be used to create a reference. Okay. So here's a case where ref and ampersand will not, they're different in the syntax. They will be different. This is the only way to do that. Now here's the most complex example with pointers and manipulating the pointer data with a dereferencing and also a mutable variable matching on that mutable variable. Interesting. Okay. So let's see here. We've got this mutable variable, mute value is six, matching on that. And then we're just gonna capture the match, which is a catch-all. Like there's no, there's nothing crazy going on here. We're gonna say ref mute. Do we need the ref? 
is my question. What if we took that out and took this out, right? We're just capturing the, the, the value. I don't even know if we need mute. We actually might. We might need that other stuff because we're referring to this data, which is capturing. We want to be able to, the idea is to be able to modify this actual value. But if we're defining this, I don't even know if the compiler will let us do that. It will. Mute value. They're saying M. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, mute values. Let's just do this. I, I like this better. Like mute values that, and then we'll say M is M. All right. Let's see if we, I'm pre, I don't know. I don't know if the data actually modify. Yeah, see, in this case, we didn't actually modify the data. So if you want to be able to match and modify the, the data, but then have a variable name let with <laughs> Because we could just, you know, do this and it will be the same, obviously. So now, now that we'll both equal 16 and it's a little more clear in this case, right? So if we really, really, so let's, okay, let's go back with their example. If we really wanted to modify the data, we have to go, we, we capture the, the mute value, which is six with a match. Then we're going to assign through local scope, a mutable reference to M. Then we dereference that by adding 10. So now not only are we modifying, well, actually we're only essentially modifying the core value here, the core data in the mute value. So now we should rerun this and they should both be 16 because they're the same data. It's the same data. It's just that we're defining M as it. Okay, I had to move the read access for the mute val itself outside of the scope because M was already assigned. The compiler was giving me an error saying, uh-oh, you can't do that because you've already got a reference to your reference. <laughs> it needs, it cannot, we cannot have that in the same scope. So we uh, we borrowed the data within that scope using M, assigning the ref mute to M for the mute val six. Dereferenced it to be able to write to the original data. And then we printed that out. We then uh, out exited the scope, which allows us, we unborrowed the data. Now our mute value is back. Now we can use that and print. Now both values are 16, even though we modified what looks like just this, this M here, but we dereferenced it. So there's a lot going on there, right? And in this case, if you really have to under certain conditions, at least you have a way to do it and do it safely. Though I recommend that you never do this intentionally just from a simplicity stake, right? In general, keeping language is simple and clean and readable without you having to un unravel the meaning, right? So it's like, oh, M, okay, reference a pointer to M. Okay, so it's a ref mute M here and M is gonna be mute value. Oh, okay. So even though everything's like all tied in here, usually in the scenario, you might have this value up somewhere else. You might not know where that is. There's just a lot of extra reading and then sort of decoding what's going on. Better to keep things simple.